Yo guys, welcome back to another video. So here we'll be going through the complete walkthrough of the Wednesday 5th of June 2019 paper. And this is in particular the paper 1, Pure Maths 1, and for the A-level syllabus. And this paper is out of 100, so we're going to try and get 100 marks, okay? Not always guaranteed, but hopefully we get what we get. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to do everything step by step. And if you guys want, you can always pause the video, try it first, and then see if your answers match up with mine. Or if my answers match up with you, if I'm doing it wrong. But other than that guys, let's go straight in. So fx equals a cubic equation guys, and you also got a couple a terms stuck in there. Now, given that x plus 3 is a factor of fx, find the value of the constant a. Alright, so first thing, if something is a factor, all that literally means guys, is that if you plug in the root of this factor, and to find the root, you just set x plus 3 to 0, and then you can realize that if you make x a subject, you'll get negative 3. So this is essentially telling us, replace x with minus 3. So let's say f minus 3. And this whole equation equals 0. And then you can solve for a once you replace all the x values with minus 3. So it looks a bit like this, guys, yeah? So if I set minus 3 right now to every single x and just wrap them up nicely in a bracket. So replace all your x sum, guys, with a bracket minus 3, just like this. Then what I would do, I would essentially put all of these terms in the calculator. So let's just evaluate this, um, 2 times this in the calculator, and this in the calculator. And if you do that, guys, you get something like that. All of this becomes minus 81. The second term becomes 18 times a, which is 18a, plus 12, and then plus 5a. And we're basically done here, guys. Now all you do is collect like terms. So minus 81 plus 12 is minus 69. And adding up the two a terms, you get this, 23a. And lastly, make a the subject, guys. All you do is add 69, divide by 23, and you got a equals 3. And we're done. So figure 1 shows a plot of part of a curve with equation y equals cos x. So here's your cos x graph, where x is measured in radians. So diagram 1 on the opposite page is a copy of figure 1. So just quickly go in there. All right, we can see it's another cos x graph, so literally the same thing. Um... A, use diagram 1 to show why this equation here, which equals 0, has only a single real root, given a reason for your answer. Okay, so there's a little trick to this question here. You essentially are only given cos x. Now, when you write something like this, the good thing is you can actually make this equation equal to cos x. Yeah? So let's do it right now. If we do that, we'll have cos x equals, and to move both of this to the other side, you need to add them across. So you're going to have a plus 2x plus half. Now, the, the nice trick is, when you're solving for equations, if you make them equal each other, then you kind of think of these as two separate equations, like one equation, which is y equals cos x, which is already drawn, by the way, and the second equation being y equals 2x plus half. Now, when we plot this line, I'm not sure if you have to make it accurate or not, but just looking at this graph for a second, yeah, you can kind of see that this cos graph kind of ends like randomly over here. It doesn't actually end perfectly on the line. Now, because it's in radians, we should know the fact that, well, this goes up to 360, right? So 360 degrees is actually equal to 2 pi. And 2 pi is um, about uh, 2 times 3.14, so about 6.28-ish, like something like that. So we can kind of think of each of these um, squares as, I think, one unit, right? Because you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, so like 6.2, perfect. So if you want to plot this graph, we can say, I don't know, let's just pick two coordinates here. Let's say when x equals 0, so let's do it here. So when x equals 0, for this y equation, we would have y equals 0 plus half. So that means y would equal half. So that's one coordinate we can plot. So x equals 0, y equals half. Let's put that about here. Um, another way you can do, I don't know, let's say when x equals uh, 1, that means y would equal, in this case, 2 times 1 is 2, plus half is 2.5. So let's just say 2.5. So the next coordinate would be here. It would be 1 across and 2.5 up, so around here. And that's it. And then we just draw a nice straight line. So the line straight line should be something like that. Okay? In your case, like always use a ruler. And now because it crosses over here, because it intersects at this point, this is literally the real root. And we are done, guys. That's what we have to say. You could say that these two intersect at this point, indicating it's a real root. And that's it. Now for the second part here, yeah? it says given that the root of the equation is alpha, okay, so this is literally your, your root, so this value is alpha, so you can kind of see like it's less than 1, right? Okay, I'm assuming it's the same question. Use a small angle approximation for cos x to estimate the value of alpha to 3s on places, alright. 
So the small angle approximation is literally this. This means that when we estimate cos um, x, this is roughly equal to 1 minus x squared over 2. And this only works when x is like really small, like 0 0.01 or 0 0.2. When it's really big, then it's not really accurate. So this is kind of what they mean. Now, all you have to do, guys, now that you know that cos x equals this, just replace this cos x and, well, solve the equation. So, so far, this means that we're going to now have uh, 1 minus x squared over 2, take away 2x, take away half equals 0. And over here, we have kind of a quadratic looking equation, yeah? So what I would do, I would clear the fraction. So I'll multiply 2 across, because I don't like looking at fractions. And if I do that, I'm going to get 2 minus x squared minus 4x minus 1 equals 0. And then just clear like terms. You've got 2 take away 1 is just plus 1. And I'm going to put that afterwards, yeah? So we're going to have minus x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. And yeah, guys, we literally have a quadratic equation here. Now, if you want to solve this, just use a quadratic formula. And a quadratic formula looks like this. It's x equals, um, what is it, minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And a, b, and c, guys, are the values in front of the x squared, the x, and the plus 1. So we can say that a equals, well, minus 1 because it's literally minus 1x squared. B is minus 4, it's in front of the X, and C is the, the plus 1, the constant. Okay, and if you substitute all these values back in, you should get an X value of uh, 0 0.236. And this is the positive answer. You also get a negative solution, but you can drop that. Alright, number 3. So show that dy of dx, so in other words, when you differentiate this equation above, you should get this kind of form, where A and N are constants to be found. Okay, so... Uh, easy way to do this guys when you got something divided by another thing we can use something known as the quotient rule Yeah, it looks a bit like this yeah so for the quotient rule we just let the top half equal u the bottom half equal v and then we just do some kind of differentiation on that so, that, so we could just say okay let u equal 5x squared plus 10x therefore when you differentiate this you should just get what 10x plus 10 okay so that part is easy you just drop the power and the get rid of this x now for v we do the same thing, we say okay, v equals x plus 1 squared, and to differentiate this one, it's actually not too bad. We use something called the chain rule, and the chain rule tells us that first we need to drop the power down, so we've got 2, uh, copy the expression, so it'd be x plus 1, reduce the power, so it'd be power 1, so it's like that. Then you differentiate it inside, well, the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, so you times that by 1, and well if you times by 1, well, you get the same thing, so you just leave it like that. So to apply the quotient rule, we just draw some arrows, yeah? And this is my method. I always say, okay, let v times u prime minus u times v prime over v squared, okay? And in words, this is just uh, dy over dx equals, well, v times u prime, so it'd be x plus 1 squared times 10x plus 10 minus, and then you subtract against the u versus v prime, so it'd be 5x squared. So actually, let's copy this one first be 2x plus 1 times uh, 5x squared plus 10x, okay? And all of this over the v squared, which is x plus 1 squared. So if you're squaring this one, it'd be power 4. So moving to the next page, we just need to go ahead and simplify the top line, okay? So let's have a look. You've got 10x plus 10. We could factorize the 10 out of there. So let's do that now. We're now going to have, well, if you take out 10, you're going to have 10 bracket. You can copy out this one first, x plus 1 squared. And because we factorize 10 out of here, we should get x plus 1. And likewise, guys, for the second part, you can actually factorize a 5x out of this. So it'll be 5x times 2, so it'll give us minus 10x. Copy the first bracket. And because we took out 5x from here, we're actually just left with uh, x plus 2. Okay, so almost done. And oh yeah, all of this over x plus 1 to the power of 4. Now, what I would personally do next, guys, I'll probably try and factorize more things, yeah? So, looking at both of these terms, we have a 10 and an x plus 1, and we have a 10 and an x plus 1. So, let's factorize that out. So, you're going to have something like 10, x plus 1, all of this fact factored out. And what I would do here is draw, like, one big square bracket and write what we didn't factor out. So, we didn't factor out x plus 1 squared. And on the right side, we didn't factor out uh, the x and x plus 2. So, it would be minus x, x plus 2. And copy out the bottom again. So it'd be x plus one to the power of four. Now, conveniently, if you look up and down, we can fact we can cancel down x plus one on both. 
So cancel this one and this becomes a power 3. Okay. We can also more, um, expand and simplify the inside. So we can have it now uh, 10 times. So expanding this now, if you open this bracket, you're going to have x squared plus 2x plus 1. So x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then if we expand the right side, we're going to have x squared plus 2x. And because we've got minus sign, it'll be the negative versions. It'll be minus x squared minus 2x. And all of this over x plus 1 to the power 3. And again, looking inside the bracket, we can cancel more terms out. We can cancel x squared with minus x squared. We can also cancel 2x with minus 2x. So you're just left with 10 times 1, which is 10. So your final answer, guys, for part A would be 10 over x plus 1 to the power 3. And boy, that was kind of long, but that's it. Now, next one. Hence, deduce the range of values for x for which the derivative, so the answer we just found, is less than 0. So I'm just going to continue from A. I'm just going to call this B straight away. So we want to solve this one when it's less than 0. So what kind of values x can this take? Well, just looking at the equation on the left, guys, yeah, we can just ask ourselves. We've got a positive number over some kind of quantity, right? The only time this can be negative is that if the quantity itself was negative, right? So let's go ahead and just rewrite this in a different way. Let's say let x plus 1 to the power 3 be negative, so less than 0. What could x be? Well, solving this, we can cube root both sides, right? If you cube root both sides, well, you just be left with x plus 1, and the cube root of 0 is 0. And from here, you, just can, you can just subtract 1 across. That means our x value is going to be less than negative 1. And that's it, guys. This is literally all you got to do. And this is the values of x, which make it negative. Okay, number four. So find the first three terms in ascending powers of x of the following binomial expansion. And we got to give each coefficient in its simplest form. Okay, so to do this, we need to firstly rewrite this in indice form. Yeah? So basically, as a bracket to the power of something. Well, if you've got a square root, we know the power should definitely be a half. And if we've got 1 over something, then it's going to be a negative half. So it'll be negative power. In other words, this whole thing would literally just be rewritten as 4 minus x to a negative half. Okay. Now, to convert something to binomial expansion, um, if the power is in a whole number, so if it's is in like 1 or 2 or 3, then we're going to use a particular form, guys. Yeah? And the particular form tells us that we need to have a 1 inside. So like a 1 plus or minus something. So in other words, we need to get a 4 outside. And to do that, we need to factor it out. Now, the key, the easy way to do this is to literally just divide 4. And if you take 4 out, you're just going to take the power with you. So it's kind of like something like 4 to the negative half. So you take it out with you and its power. Then you're left with 1 minus. And because you took the 4 out of the x, you'd be, you'd be left with x over 4, okay, to the power of negative half. And this makes sense in its own kind of way. Now, all we got to do now is literally deal with this and use the binomial expansion form. Need to think of the 1 plus a so capital a to power n okay and this is the form i'm going to use here and oh yeah 4 to negative half guys is actually the same as uh 1 over 2 okay so it'll be 1 over 2 times all this expansion so it'll be half times that now using a binary expansion okay I'll, I'll show you guys a formula it looks like this so just looking at everything here we got our first term because they want the first three terms second term and even third term now, what I'll do is just replace every value, and just remember, according to the formula, guys, yeah, our power n is actually minus half, so n equals, in this case, I'll write it as minus 0 0.5, and our a term is going to be minus x over 4, okay? So, updating all the values here, you're going to see that we have 1 plus minus 0 0.5, minus x over 4 in place of a, and for n is the same, for n minus 1, is going to be minus 0 0.5, take away 1, which is minus 1.5, so... That's okay. And it would be minus x over 4 squared. And we are done, guys. All you got to do is literally uh, multiply this out. Now, quick trick. If you're going to put this in your calculator, guys, like, for example, let's rewrite this um, first term, right? Um, in the calculator, you know you don't have an x bun. So what we do, we write on the right, I'll write over here. We write minus 0 0.5 over 1 factorial. There's a factorial bun. It looks like an exclamation mark. And the next to it, we put a big bracket. And just imagine x, just imagine you're going to ignore the x. So let's just write 1. Always write 1 in place of x. It'll be minus 1 over 4 to the power of 1. We, we will repeat this for the rest, for the second one as well. If you put this in the calculator exactly, you should get 1 over 8. And then you can stick the x in front. Likewise, if you do the second part, copying exactly as it is, replace x with 1 and then put this bracket squared, 
you'll get 3 over 128. And because you've got x squared, you stick it in front. 1 is as it is. And finally, guys, just literally times the whole thing by half to so just smack it out. You should get the final result of half plus 1 over 16x plus 3 over 256. And that's it, guys. We're done for A. So moving on to part B. Now, the expansion can be used to find an approximation root 2. So it's talking about our little expansion right here. Possible values of x that could be substituted into this expansion of the following, yeah? So we've got x equals minus 14, because if you replace this x minus 14, it will look like root 18, and it becomes like that. If you plug in 2, you're going to get root 2 over 2, and if you plug in negative half, well, you end up with a number like that. Without evaluating your expansion, but I personally recommend you guys kind of do in your mind, state, given a reason, which of the three values of x should not be used. Okay, so... Out of these three, the ones that should not be used is actually anything where the x value is um, greater than 4. Okay, because for this kind of expansion, um, and I'll explain why, if you plug in a, like a massive value, say bigger than 4, or in your case, in this case, minus 14, what's going to happen is that you're going to somehow have a really negative result. Okay, because it starts slow here, but you can test it. If you plug like minus 14 now, you get like minus 0 0.4 something something. So that's quite bad. If you plug in one of these two results, well, it's going to be quite stable because it's within um, it's within the limit of 4. So we can go ahead and say, well, we wouldn't put x equals negative 14. Why? Because we need to make sure that the absolute value of, of whatever we choose is going to, has to be less than 4. Okay, and this is kind of a legit argument. Now for the second part, it says state given a reason which of the three values of x would lead to the most accurate approximation of root 2. Well, the best approximation now, and just looking over here, is to basically minimize the x value. Yeah? You want to get as small as possible, like not zero, but like at least like close to it, right? And in our and out of these three choices, it's going to be this uh, this one. Typically, um, you'd think it's this one because it's just half of root two, and this is a third of it. But in terms of expansions, when you plug in a, a small a small negative uh, fraction or small fraction in general, it will become close to the answer, at least for the beginning. But yeah, and that's it. This pretty much ends the question. So yeah, we can just say x equals negative half because it's the smallest value. And that's really it. I just want to thank you guys for coming to this end of my channel. And if you've enjoyed the content so far, just go onto my channel page, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for more notifications. And if you want, you can do personalize or all. And that way you won't miss any future maths or educational videos. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching and see you next time. Ciao.